Hi everyone, in this lecture I want to show you how to fit active decaution models with a given daily data. To do so, we need to define an objective function. An objective function is written in terms of the difference between the calculated value of a given property and the experimental value of the same property. So for the example, I have shown you three kind of objective functions. One is written in terms of pressure, the another one is written in terms of excess free energy. The final one is written in terms of activity caution. This difference is termed as residual. We can change the calculated value that is mentioned here by adjusting the model parameter. We are trying to determine to find the best choice of model parameter. We minimize the sum of square of the residual over all i measured points. To make you understand this kind of problems, I have the problem with me. I will show you how to solve this kind of problem in Excel. The problem is given here. Liquid of recriminator has been collected for a binary system of benzene, cyclohexane at 10 degrees Celsius. Mole fraction of liquid and vapor with total pressure are reported in the table. So you can observe. You can see the mole fraction of liquid and vapor is tabulated here as well as the total pressure is given here. Mole fraction of liquid and vapor is a salt pressure reported in the table. From this data, determine the values of two suffix modulus parameters. So, as per our discussion earlier, our objective function I have written in terms of pressure. It is objective function in terms of pressure is summation of P experimental minus P calculated power 2. To calculate P, the P calculated, I have formula here that is x1 gamma 1 P1 saturated plus 1 minus x1 gamma 2 P2 saturated. Here active decaution can be calculated using two suffix modulus equation which is given here where A is the two suffix modulus parameter. Our objective is we need to determine this A value by minimizing this objective function. Uh, to calculate total pressure I must know P1 saturation and P2 saturation that is not given in the problem directly but it is given in the data indirectly. When x1 equal to 0, that means that it is a pure component of cyclic action. At that condition, the pressure will be equal to the saturation pressure of cyclic action that is I have written here. Similarly, when x1 equal to 1, it is a pure component of benzene, pressure at this condition will be the saturation pressure of our benzene which is written here. Now, my next task is I am going to calculate gamma 1 from two suffix modulus equation. That for that I am going to write the formula in the Excel. It is equal to here ln gamma 1 is given. So I want to take exponential of this value. So exponential of to start with this problem, I am going to assume A as a 1 at initial stage. Okay, we will do that first. We will assume A equal to 1. That is equal to exponential of G. To fix this uh, cell as a constant, I am going to insert dollar in front of N. Divide by R values 8.314 multiplied by T, which is at 10 degrees Celsius. I have converted into Kelvin, that is 283 Kelvin. This value also should be constant. So I am just inserting dollar symbol to fix this cell. Close the bracket. Multiply by one minus x one. So one minus x one. Close the bracket. Power two. Close the bracket again. That's my value. Yeah. Now I'm going to copy the formula for entire cells by double clicking on the corner of the cell. Similarly, if you look at the gamma two, it is everything similar, but the only thing is here instead of one minus x one, here it is x one. So I'm just going to copy the formula of this, and I'm going to put it here. 
put a tickle here and everything is same but only thing is the one minus will be removed from here that's all and I'm going to copy that cell to enter cell and now we have calculated gamma 1 and gamma 2 now let us calculate P experimental now let us calculate P from the given formula P is nothing but multiplication of x1 is equal to multiplied by gamma 1 multiplied by saturation pressure of gamma number 1 plus 1 minus x1 1 minus x1 multiplied by gamma 2 it is e11 e11 multiplied by pressure but if I am going to extend this uh, cell formula to the entire column, I want to fix the value of saturation pressure as a constant. To do so, I am going to insert dollar symbol in front of n. Therefore, the value of the saturation pressure will be fixed for the entire column. Now I am going to copy this. The, you can check here. the value of saturation pressure is fixed for throughout the entire column. Now let us now let us calculate our objective function that is nothing but the difference between it is a square of difference between the experimental minus calculator. It is equal to P experimental minus P calculator close the bracket number. Now let me extend this formula to entire column. Finally, let us find the sum. Sum that is equal to we have found the sum now. Our ultimate aim is we want to minimize this sum of squared error. For that, I'm going to use a solver in the Excel. So I want to set my objective function as a this cell. So I have selected that, and I want to minimize this objective function by changing the value of a that is a that is the n 6 cell you can see here if i am going to click on the solve you are going to solve to give a solution where my a is 1399.743 you can closely observe here the pressure of experimental is close to the pressure of calculator by entire things in order to visualize the difference between experimental pressure and the calculated pressure, let us construct a graph and insert, let us select chart. Select data. Add see this name. Let me give it is experimental. Okay. X values. Let me take my mole fraction of liquid phase. And Y values. Let me take the pressure that is calculated experimentally. That is measured experimentally. Okay. Now let us plot a graph similar to that for theoretically calculated. Add series name, let me give us calculated. X values will be same as what we have taken previously. Then Y values will be. Which we have calculated here. You 
we can observe what we can observe here is what we can observe here is both experimental and theoretical are aligned let us see what happened actually Yeah, let us check what happened actually here. We actually we started the problem with AS1. The moment I give on AS1, you can see here our calculated values deviate much from the experimental one. Then what we have done is we went to the solver under the data solver. And we have just chosen the our objective cell as this one, and we want to minimize this by changing our a value. Our a. Now I am going to solve. You can see what is the thing happens in the curve. You can see here. Now we have calculated a in such a way that our experimental and the calculate, calculated values are aligned together. Thank you for being with me. So with this example, we have seen how to fit a two suffix marvelous equation parameter A by from the given daily data.